Hello, everybody. It's Miss Henderson. Today, we are going to do the invert exercise. So on Canvas, you will find this picture. This is a picture of one of my cats. Um, so in this exercise, we're going to learn how to change an image black and white. So how to take a color image, make it black and white, and how to invert it. Remember, invert is a fancy word to make things look like they're a negative. Um, so I had this all done in Pixlr, but now we're doing it in Photopia. So um, as the instructions say, we're gonna go to image adjustments and select black and white. So I'm gonna go image adjustments and black and white. In Adobe Photoshop and in GIMP, you can change the mode. Um, you can go from mode to RGB, CMYK, um, or grayscale. Ooh, something happened bad. What was that? Okay. I don't know what happened with that filter, but now I hit reset and that looks like to be normal. Okay, we're going to go with this. All right, where's my layers? Here we go. All right, so I have one layer and it's a black and white cat. It was color, it was color, now it's black and white. All right, we're gonna duplicate this layer by uh, two finger on our Chromebooks, right mouse clicking and hit duplicate layer. And uh, this one we're gonna invert, image, adjustments, invert. All right, so let's verify. I got my top layer inverted, and then my bottom layer here is my background layer, and that's black and white. Uh, you don't have to necessarily label your layers, but sometimes it helps. Okay, now what we're going to do um, is kind of like chop up little um, stripes. So according to the assignment, in order to get an A on this exercise, you need at least seven. So you need seven stripes. All right, so I'm going to take my rectangular marquee tool, which is here, draw a rectangle and hit backspace. Okay. And as soon as I hit backspace, I it'll show you the layer underneath. Um, you can vary the sizes of your layers. I mean, the stripes, if you want, vary the sizes of your stripes, if you wish. Almost done. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need to do one more. All right, now um, just that bottom stripe is selected, so I'm going to go through here and select, deselect. Select none or deselect. All right, I'm going to start another layer. I'm going to hit this new layer button located down here in the bottom right-hand corner by the trash can. And we're going to experiment with the gradient feature. Now, remember, you can hit the G key. Okay. Um, and here's the gradient. And right now, the two colors that I have selected are black and white. So it automatically um, makes a gradient between those two colors that are already selected. So if I want to change the colors here, I'm going to click on these little color swatches. I think you have to double click. I was doing this earlier. No. Help me out, computer. See, now that I'm demonstrating it, it's not going to work out. All right. So we're going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. Let me do some green. I'm going to have this really funky, ugly. Okay. All right. Um, so you will notice there's different gradient options, linear, radial, angle, reflected, and diamond. You can play around with those. Let's do a diamond. Um, so I'm clicking and dragging, and then it's going to um, give me a gradient. And I can play around and draw my lines in different directions to see what kind of gradients it's going to want. Now, obviously, I can't see the cat. Where'd the cat go? I can't find it. Um, 
you can normally in the past I would just change the opacity, but there I call I'm not sure if these are called layer effects. But there's a lot of different layer options. Um, so I just selected the darken version. Um, you can get really funky with some of this stuff. Yeah, that looks pretty interesting. And you can combine that if you think it's too intense of a color, maybe drop it down a little bit. It's up to you. Kind of like it's super saturated. Uh, now, remember, we need to save this as two files. One, PSD, a Photoshop document. And number two is a JPEG or a PNG. Um, you're going to take that JPEG or PNG and turn it in uh, to this inverse, this invert exercise project. So let's go do that now. So file, export as JPEG. And it should be um, Animal 006, but you can go back and rename it. Uh, now, remember, sometimes in Photopia, it like super zooms in. So don't freak out. Um, you do want 100%. You want to save it as a big file size. This, Granted, this may be too big, but we're just going to work with it. If your computer gets super laggy, you may want to go in and, and adjust the image size. All right, I saved it as a JPEG. Now I'm going to save it as a PSD. Remember, guys, I'm going to rename my file and put this in my photography folder. You don't want to fill your downloads folder up um, with all these random images because sometimes if you go to upload them on Artsonia, Artsonia cannot see your um, downloads folder in your Google Drive, but it can see your photography folder. So that's why sometimes you want to move them back and forth between the two. All right, we are done for today, guys. So I will see you later. Bye.